And welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Glad, uh, great to have you in the conversation. Excuse me, just one minute. I just unplugged myself. Stay with me. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. I got to lean back and find the slot where the uh, plug for my earbud goes. Anyway, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. It's a Tuesday edition of Focal Point. Uh, talking first hour about the Boy Scouts, hoping that they will stand firm. Reveals a lot about Big Gay. It's a sinister movement, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing benign about it. There's nothing tolerant about it. They claim that they are the paragons. That they are the most intolerant people in America. Big gay, homosexual activists. Again, I'm not saying that about all homosexuals. I'm saying that about homosexual activists, they are the biggest, baddest bullies on the block. They are intolerant. They are hateful. They are full of vitriol. And they are first-class, first-rate bigots. And so here's hoping that... The Boy Scouts do not give in to them, do not let the bullies win. Now, last segment, uh, when I was on with David Schuster, I had a second uh, segment with him. We actually went two segments on his program Saturday. His program is based in Washington, uh, D.C. And what I try to do in these very hostile environments like this, and I don't know if this will be helpful or not, but when he brings up the topic of gay marriage, then I'm going to speak the truth whether it is exactly responsive to his question or not, because he's not asking that question because he wants to learn something. He's asking that question because he's trying to trip me up. That's what the Pharisees and the scribes did with Jesus. Remember, it said repeatedly in the gospel, they kept trying to catch him in something that he might say. So they kept asking Christ these loaded questions because they were hoping that they would catch him misspeaking so they could grab that soundbite. They're just like the mainstream media today, trying to grab one soundbite, grab that, and then use it to uh, attack him. And Jesus never gave them the satisfaction. Sometimes he wouldn't even answer their questions. Some he, times he would give them an answer that what didn't even relate to the question they were asking. Sometimes he would ask them a question uh, in return. Uh, so we're not obligated when we're dealing with people that are hostile I mean, they're not asking, if, if somebody's asking a question because they want to know, that's a different thing. But if they're asking a question and their purpose is malicious, their purpose is to try to uh, destroy you, their purpose is to try to trip you up, their purpose is to try to trap you, we are absolutely under no moral obligation to accept the premise of their question whatsoever. So he brings up gay marriage. I'm going to tell him the truth about gay marriage. I don't care what he asks. I don't care what his question is because his, the, he's not asking the question to get information or to learn or to give his listening audience information. He's asking the question for a malicious purpose, and I'm, not just gonna, I'm just not going to play the game on his turf. Same with the slavery thing. Brings up the slavery thing. I'm going to tell him the truth about what the Bible teaches about slavery. I don't care how many other verses in Leviticus or Exodus he throws in there because he's not genuinely interested in hearing the truth. He's just trying to trip me up, and, and we're under no obligation to give them uh, the satisfaction. So I hope in some way that might have been a little bit uh, instructive. And if you have any observations about that, we're going to go to the phones here before too long. I'd be glad to uh, glad to hear it. Now, you may be aware, let's go to clip three, Rob, change uh, shift gears here just a little bit. Uh, President Obama did an interview with 60 Minutes on uh, Sunday night. Steve Croft is kind of their main guy. And then remember, 60 Minutes, 60 Minutes used to be, I mean, if 60 Minutes showed up on the front doorstep of your office complex on Monday morning, you would start shaking in your boots. In fact, I remember, you know, how do you know you're having a bad day when you see, when you see Mike Wallace and the crew of 60 minutes at your front door, that's how you know you're having a bad day because everybody feared them because they were fearless and they would wade in and they would ask all the challenging questions. Well, th that thing with uh, president Obama and Hillary Clinton, it was nauseating. It was uh, sickeningly sweet and fawning and sycophantic. And here is Steve Croft, and he basically agrees with me. He, Piers Morgan is asking Steve Croft, look, um, how did you, uh, how'd you get Obama to come on 60 Minutes with you? Now, I never see Obama on Fox News. I never see Obama on with Sean Hannity. I never see Obama on with Rush Limbaugh. Uh, which reminds me that I am Rush Limbaugh on bath salts, according to the Democratic uh, Underground. So Steve Croft says, well, how did you get him on your show? And here's how their exchange went. Let's listen. Cross, Steve, welcome to you. Thanks, Pierce. Nice to be here. 
I, I want to thank you for getting every single Obama interview that I've been trying to get in the last two years <laughs> on CNN, first of all. I've done a lot. <laughs> a lot. Well, let me ask you off the top. Why do you think he keeps coming to you? Because there's two schools of thought. One is that you're the most brilliant, penetrating interviewer on American television. And the other one is that you give him a soft time. Neither of which I suspect is entirely the true picture. No, I think that, first of all, I think he likes 60 Minutes. It's, uh, you know, we have a huge audience. We have a format that suits him. It's long. We can do 12 minutes or 24 minutes. Uh, we do a, you know, we do a good job of editing. Uh, and, and I've been doing these interviews with him since a few weeks before he declared his candidacy. So I covered him during the campaign and have kept doing it in, in the White House. But I think it's a question of fairness. I, we have not, uh, I think he knows that we're not going to play gotcha with him, that we're not going to go out of our way to make him look bad or stupid. And they'll, we'll let him answer the questions. So basically, uh, Steve Croft agrees with Piers Morgan. He comes on our program because we give him a soft time. He knows we're not going to ask him any hard questions. He knows we're not going to back him into a corner. He knows we're not going to ask difficult questions about Benghazi. He knows that we're not going to ask difficult uh, questions about the deaths of those four uh, diplomatic folks in Benghazi at the consulate. He knows we're going to leave him alone and all that stuff. We're not going to ask him tough questions about the uh, uh, about unemployment among blacks you even got the NAACP the National Association for the Abortion of Colored People that's the NAACP they're out there complaining that the unemployment rate that Obama has been brutal on blacks he's killing blacks it's always the little guy that gets hurt under socialism ladies and gentlemen that's the point here it's the little guy that gets hurt the socialists like Barack Obama they claim that they're in it for the little guy. We're here for the little guy. The little guy is getting trampled on. We're the champion of the little guy. It's always the little guy that gets blistered by their policies, and the African-American community is a perfect example of that. Unemployment rate among African-American teens is like pushing 50%. It's 14% in general among the African-American community, nearly twice what it is in the rest of the culture. And Steve Croft says he knows we're not going to ask him any of those tough questions, so he loves coming on our program, because we do a good job of editing. He says something stupid, we edit it out. People never know we said it. We make him look good. We're big Obama fanboys. That's why he comes on our program. I got a little bobblehead. I got a little Obama bobblehead, dot on the, uh, bobblehead doll on the dash of my car. That's why President Obama likes to come on my program. Now, here's Kirsten Powers, clip four. She is a Democrat strategist, and she's a, now a Fox News contributor, and uh, she's actually a pretty honest, she verges on doing actual honest journalism on occasion. Remember, she is a Democrat strategist now. And here's what she had to say about that nauseating interview on 60 Minutes. I mean, it really was something you would expect from, like, the state-run media. You know, it, it was that kind of level of uh, propaganda, as far as I'm concerned. I, first of all, 60 Minutes was transparently being used as a campaign advertisement, which... You know, if, if they're if they're okay with that, then okay. But why? I think Kirsten, why once you, why would they do what, this? They don't have to do that. Why? Well, I I can understand maybe agreeing to the interview, asking, letting them have like maybe one softball question in the beginning, and then move on to to more important things. But the reality is, is that it, I mean, this was a joke. I, I I mean, it really was. You you look at it and 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 even just not challenging basic things like the president claiming that Hillary's been a great Secretary of State beca and, and beca in part because they have dismantled Al Qaeda. Now. I'm sorry, it's just, does anyone paying attention to what's going on in North Africa? Yeah. Why is the president not asked about Algeria, so true. Mali, um, Libya? Yeah. I, you know, I mean, these, these are in front and center in the news right now. So Kirsten Powers, just speaking the truth, this, this was just uh, what you would expect from Pravda in the old Soviet Union, uh, where they are ministers of propaganda. And that's all, that's all Steve Croft is. For Barack Obama, he is a minister of propaganda. The Associated Press is associated propaganda. Uh, they are just there to parrot whatever the party line is of the regime. And that's why, as Ted Cruz said yesterday to House Republicans, look, just dump your um, subscription to, to the New York Times. Don't even bother to read it. It's a waste of time because you know exactly what they are going to say. Now, uh, Rob, I want to start wading into the immigration issue so let's see if we can put that clip five, that Carney clip in uh, to, uh, to start here before we get to the break. I want to shift gears and talk about uh, 